as well. Was that Steve scared or not? Both. Well, I'm getting kind of lucky with the rain. It's starting to rain heavy again. I might be able to get one more email out. Maybe I'll have to do some in the truck. It's been raining so hard. It, it was abs it almost looked like it was nighttime. It was so dark from the rain clouds here, man. I'm so over it. I'm starting to feel a hostage. Like I'm hostage in a third world country being here right now. If I could, one thing I'd like to offer up to all you, if you could, if you find you're in that hamster, you're in that hamster wheel of life and just nothing's changing and it's everything and everything's just feeling off or wrong. This is what I started doing quite a handful of years ago. I started to just jump jump out of your bubble, meaning leave the country. Get in a plane, fly away, go somewhere. Just go somewhere new. Get the hell out of your get out of your hamster wheel, get out of your bubble, and you go away somewhere new at least two weeks if you can. Try to do it. And what I find have found is when you look it makes you look back in your bubble and you can see clearly things that you aren't doing you should be doing things that are sitting there present in front of your face that you should be tackling which make a big difference in your life you just start seeing everything absolutely more clear and then you can go back back into your your own little personal world again and tend to all those different items and then your life becomes way more better real rapidly all right, so if I could strongly suggest to all of you something that will possibly help you and your life out is that at least once a year, don't, don't let it go more than a year. I've found you jump out of your bubble, get the hell away from it, relax, and look into that bubble from a distance, and everything you might be doing wrong or not putting your, your energy into the right direction becomes very, very clear. And then you jump back in your bubble and you tend to those items and everything starts to get real kick-ass cool. And that's a fact. And right now, I know I need to jump out of my bubble, and I usually do, and this bullshit virus crap is absolutely shitting all over it, ruining it. And it's kind of really frustrating. But anyway, that's something I'd like to share with everybody. Something I've learned firsthand on my own, and it holds very, very true. Anyway, let me read one of these real quick. And it's it's starting to rain. Rain, rain. So I better uh, not ruin that camera. Uh, okay, I read that one. Steve, my name is Rusty. I'm 52 years young. I'm a retired firefighter, EMT, and rescue specialist and search and rescue tech for 26 years. I also served my country in the Army for four years and contracted, and contracted with DOD as Executive Protection Specialist. I'm a trained observer. I know how to track, which leads me to three encounters in 2012, 2017, and my final in 2018 with the forest people in Washington State. First in 2012, while hunting deer in the Willapah, Willapah Hills between I-5 and the Washington coast. I walked two miles into my lifelong hunting zone on a private land, sat in a ground blind in a slash pile, and I, I built the summer before. It was one hour of nothing. No birds, n no mama raccoon searched for crawfish in the creek below, not even the sounds of crows. I did hear a hush talking in the brush. It went on for 20 minutes like a conversation. Frustrated by rude people, I left for that day. Day two, early morning. Walked back to that spot with my son and his friend. Went out of the darkness. The loudest scream roar from God only knows filled the valley. We all turned and got the hell out of there. 2017 new season. Walked into an area near the stand. 45 minutes passed. It's daybreak now. Clear sky, some ground fog. 
The peace and quiet was broken by the sound of many feet, deer feet, running on the gravel road as five does ran past my blind heading uphill. It startled me enough where I stood up, looked down in time to see a dark brown hairy thing turn and run on the 25-year-old pine grove. I was terrified. In seconds, this thing was more than 200 feet from me, panting and grunting. I couldn't move. Instead of running, I yelled out, Hey! Didn't know what the hell I expected, but I got nothing in return. I got the hell out of there. Finally, I took my 8-year-old mother out with me in September 2018. She loves to hike and track. Tomboy at heart. We walked back half a mile when we heard chattering. Quiet chattering like conversation, yet not English. Walked a bit further, 50 to 70 yards, when we saw two dark figures, both about five or six feet tall, skinny, walking 20 yards back in the Aldern Pine, paralleling us as we, as we walked. This went on for 45 minutes. We'd walk a bit, stop, we'd walk a bit, stop, and talk out loud to them. The chatter continued. Got to the end of the road where there was a three acre swamp created by beaver dams. We got the feeling of, don't go further. When listening to the chatter, we heard a deep, low grunt, like fathers annoyed by his kids screwing around, and the chattering stopped. The energy changed as if someone was waiting for us to leave. We left. We were followed out the entire way. We knew we ran across a family of forest folk, Bigfoot, Gigantopithecus, whatever. I believe this group knows me. I've hunted there for 41 years. We didn't feel threatened or at risk. I only watched. They have abilities we humans don't understand. Billions of years of evolution of the species, perhaps? I don't know. They are very real and deserve our respect. Keep doing what you're doing, Steve. Love the channel, your ideology, and your beliefs on being the best man for your family. Rusty. Right on, Rusty. Thanks for that email, man. Appreciate it. And, uh... It's just, it's just another big, it's just another gallon dumped in the bucket of, of first-hand knowledge shared with all of us, right? <laughs> it's just more and more knowledge every single day. Every single day, knowledge is getting slammed into my email boxes to be meant to be shared with all you guys. Every single day. And uh, I've said it before, you probably, if you've watched enough of these, listened enough of these emails, you, you know as well as I do that, what is it, 95% probably? These emails are from people who are hunting, right? So to all you people that are complaining, there's, there's no more hunting stories anymore. There's nothing about hunting. Well, guess what? Every little frickin' second of these emails is directly about hunting. And if it hasn't affected you yet, it's affected somebody you know. I'll bet my life on it. It's, direct, it's affected somebody you know, without a doubt. Whether it be a co-worker, a, a friend of a mutual friend or family member, it's happened to someone you know. That's all there is to it. There's no getting out of it. Woo, it's freaking cold out. August 26, 2016. I'm capping with my in-laws at a place in a national forest near Osoyoos, BC, on the US side. As I'm from Washington State. We're in an area called Totes Coulee, a little campground in the middle fork of Totes Coulee Creek. This campground is in a small canyon where the trail leads up to the Tiffany Mountains and into the Pasatine, into the Pasatin, Pasatin Wilderness, unoccupied wilderness in North Cascades, closed to all but foot traffic and no horses, no chainsaws or power tools allowed. I hiked around most of the day with my dog and wife. We settled in for the night. About 2 a.m., my daughter, age 11 months, woke up, cried a bit, got back to sleep. I laid there in my tent thinking about how I should have built a wood stove for it. Just then I heard the horses nickering and making a fuss, so I figured I'd listen for bears or something else that may have, have to run off. That's when I heard a very loud smooch noise, like you'd make when you're kissing someone, but it was too damn loud, like it sounded as if it was just outside my tent. Then a series of smooches, like when you call a dog, but loud. I said to my wife, do you hear that? Yes, she replied. What the hell is that? At that point, a loud whoop was let up and followed by a series of smooches. Oh, there's a car coming. Ah, whatever. It was so loud it vibrated my head. I lay there thinking now, what the heck is that? I put on my boots and jacket on and tried to wake my 14-year-old dog, but he was not getting up. I picked up my gun belt, got my flashlight, and sat in the cold dark for the next three hours, afraid to move. 
Got a boat. Okay, holding on. I lay there thinking now, what the heck is that? I put on my boots and jacket and tried to wake my 14-year-old dog, but he's not getting up. That's a weird one. I picked up my gun belt, got my mountain flashlight, and sat in the cold dark for the next three hours, afraid to move. At about something a.m., oh, at about a.m., I got the guts to shine my spotlight out of the vent hole of the tent, didn't see anything. At first light, I got out and walked around the camp. I talked to my wife's grandmother and great aunt. They heard it, but they swear it was a panther. A jaguar, as they are from Arkansas. I formed that I've been in the woods my entire life and never heard that. My father-in-law pretended to not hear anything, and then after breakfast, the entire campground emptied out. We were slated to spend four days there. The in-laws all of a sudden had places to be and left. The other campers in the area also left. So the wife and I started packing up. My brother-in-law came through the air as he was out scouting for deer season. I told him what had happened. He didn't seem surprised. I went ahead and snapped some photos of the kids and family. I got an odd picture on my phone. I'll also include. In the tree line, it looks like a massive figure kind of snugged up behind a standing snag. I went back and didn't see the same shape on subsequent quip trips. I'll also include GPS coordinates if you ever find yourself passed through a cellulose and maybe you want to go look for yourself. Thank you for the platform and the picture and clothes. Make up what you will. Thank you, Jesse Reddy. All right, Jesse. Uh, I got here. Thanks for that. I'll, I'll include the, I'll throw the photo up for you for sure. And uh, everybody can have a look at it take from from the will you know it seems there's a lot of people out there who have photographs or send photographs or and they seem to see things that i sure can't see i don't know if it's just me or if, i don't know i haven't a clue but uh i'll share it any of you out there want me to share a photograph i'll share it i'm not the judge right i'm not the one to decide what you get to see or not get to see and i'm also not the one who decides what should be shared or shouldn't be shared all right i'm like a handful of other um, groups or or uh, communities out there online where actually some of them even have dictated if you even say my name in their comment section they'll delete and block you <laughs> i don't know why that shit makes me laugh it just does it just makes me laugh the uh the so-called Bigfoot Sasquatch community, man, is the, sadly the majority of the, the, the egos that seem to be getting involved in those communities are something else, man. There's something else to watch, isn't it? It's kind of embarrassing, cringeworthy, and somewhat kind of funny and entertaining at the same time as, as well. It all depends on how you look at it, right? So many different weird characters, man. Almost every one of them at one point or another emailed me, tried to get a hold of me, or got somebody else to email for them after I didn't reply and still haven't replied, and they went then they went to attacking me. Some egomaniac, creepy researchers would email me and say, Contact me now, give me a call give me a call now. And the same guy said later on, You'll come to me. You'll eventually come to me. <laughs> It just, it's endless. And other guys would go out of their way to find me in other social media routes and, and try to make sarcastic comments and attack me. It's kind of, a, it's kind of entertaining. It's, it's sad too, but it's fairly entertaining. But uh, uh, from what I think we've probably all learned together so far right now is the majority of the people who call themselves researchers or members of the Bigfoot, representatives of the Bigfoot Sasquatch community, it's turning out that they are probably the worst enemy of the topic in reality. That's what it's boiling down to. It's a sad, sad fact, but it seems to be true the more and more I observe it from a distance, sitting on the edge of the fence. But anyway, a lot of you will complain that I give the trolls too much time, and too much attention, too much energy. But let's face it, come on, they're my play toys sometimes. It's too fun, it's too easy, and it makes me laugh. There's nothing... Sometimes, I don't know, maybe I'm just a little sick in the head sometimes, but sometimes it's just, it's easy to subtly stick to them and poke it to them and watch the reactions and see how, actually, how easy it is to, to, uh, to get them to knee-jerk react, you know? It's kind of a sick little game of mine, but it's kind of entertaining. Sorry. Anyway, I wonder if you guys see anything behind me. See any seals, tackle fish or anything? Um, all this land behind me. 
all this land behind me and on that up on that side is both frequented by these beings a lot there's shit piles of shit piles of uh, experiences and sightings come from all around here all the time always has been always will but anyway maybe got some enough battery power left and i'll see if i can get another one out and that's it <laughs> Bro, I'm, I'm wet I'm, I'm wet all the way through already so what else we got having a clue hi steve this is wes i need to rewrite this story i did a poor job last time i'll get it right now we're in the okanagan national forest 100 miles from anyone we're hunting for deer and a good area to hunt later so anyway we're in the middle of nowhere my aunt stops the car we get out and go down the hill towards a creek the grass and the bushes were about 10 to 15 feet high so we're walking around and we hear a very large growl from deep in the bushes so we thought it was a bear and decided to head out of there it is late afternoon so we head up to wherever we're going to camp out for the night so we head up the mountain when we got there it was getting dark so we made a fire and put our sleeping bags on the ground just about then we hear a screaming from the valley below i thought it was an elk he said to me there are no elk in this forest then i was confused what was that screaming was it sounds to be getting closer i said to my cousin all right so i'm guessing it was your cousin not your aunt all right he said he thought maybe a grizzly then the screaming kept getting closer we were 3,000 feet from the valley below it took half an hour to get to us screaming all the way it sounded like a d6 cat coming up from the valley below we had two 30 odd sixes with two boxes of shells one was automatic one was bolt action with a clip anyways it was to me unreal it was ripping out trees and smashing them into into other trees it was so loud we looked at each other it was too close to run at that point the fire was 10 feet high so we could see it we unloaded everything we had in the rifles we stopped and just listened looking at each other nothing we sat up all night and we listened nothing we sat up all night and just listened hours were like minutes then the sun came up my aunt was yelling fire no it's just the sun coming up we were too scared to go look to this day we don't talk about it i tried to get him to go back he said no because there's when there's one there's more anyway i want to go back and see the government knows if i would have known it could have been different maybe this next year when the snow clears this is my truth so help me god huh well that was a little different so he said the fire was 10 feet tall so you saw it maybe that was a miss a typo or something but it sounds like the fire is big enough you saw this thing and then you guys unloaded your firearms into it i think that's what you're saying trying to get across is that you unloaded your weapons and shot the shit out of this thing and if you did and maybe you could email me back and let me know like were you shooting at a being did you clearly see a being from the firelight were you pounding the shit out with the lead did you hear the bullets impact was it screaming was it falling backwards or were you just shooting into the darkness and nothing happened I know I understand a lot of people out there when they write in these experiences you're reliving it as you're writing it and you're probably more freaked out reliving it in your head as you're writing and which would take away your focus on writing down the perfect detail and putting us right there when you're having that experience and not every single one of us not many of us are the best writers of stories in the world right well that sure sounds like a scary experience especially that sound I remember when I heard that thing was was blasting a tree I call it a tree into the side of a tree or a log whatever it had in his hands and it was doing that and you could I could hear it swishing through the the underbrush impacting on the side of the cottonwood in the bottom of the valley later springtime and uh the only way you could mimic that is if you tied a log under the side of a boom of a backhoe and blast into the cottonwood tree and that's pretty freaking intimidating <laughs> where there's no roads and you're by yourself in the timber right so i can completely relate to the the loudness that you experienced although i haven't had anything ripping across a valley sounding like a d8 coming towards me that rapidly in the night i haven't had that happen yet and i'm not i hope i don't who needs that experience right but anyway that would be interesting if you uh if it was a being that you guys were throwing lead into and it was impacting it 
it'd be interesting to know exactly what happened at that moment. What were you firing at and what was happening as the lead was, was going into your target. That would be interesting to hear those details. Anyway, I'm wet now for sure and cold and um, it's time to go. <laughs> so be safe out there and everybody email me back when you can and email me your experiences.